This video is carrying on from our part one where we looked at the workshop navigation and low poly preparation. And what we're basically going to do, do in this um, video is split our low poly up and um, get it ready for baking. After this, we'll be ready to make our high poly. The main reason for splitting up the model is so we can get a clean bake. And it also, is, also allows us to work um, easily on like different components of the gun. So as it stands as one whole object, um, when we go to bacon, we're going to get uh, areas that are overlapping each other. We're going to get normal errors, etc. So this just makes the whole baking process a lot easier. I'm starting off by creating some collections. These are a good way to organize your project. Normally by the normally by the time I finish making this gun, I'll have three photos. So I'll have a Thompson low poly split. So what we're going to do now, we'll have a Thompson low poly uh, texturing, so that'll basically just be the workshop object, but flipped. And then the final one will be the high poly. As you can see, I also like to color code these, so um, that's just an easy way to tell them apart. What I'm doing is here, I'm just importing the object we downloaded from the workshop in the first place. That's the unedited one, not the one we split in the last video. After I've imported that, we're basically going to do the same thing as we did in the first video. So we're going to position it near the world origin and we're also going to flip the object. So it's uh, matching how the game presents it. It doesn't really matter where we position this model. It doesn't need to be the same as the first model we created. But uh, yeah, as before, it's just nice to be near the world origin. So it's easy to uh, navigate. I'm also renaming the object so I can easily keep a track of which object I'm working on. So for this uh, secondary object, I'm just calling it Thompson Workshop um, Texturing and Rendering. So now we've got that second model set up in its, um, in its own folder. We can just hide that collection because we're going to start working on the model we created in the first part of this tutorial series, um, which is the one with the corrected GB map. So we're going to select the model and then enter the edit mode. So you can do that just by clicking on the model and pressing tab. That will get you into the edit mode. And we're basically just going to go around the model and split each of the individual parts into its own object. So the way I do that is I go into face mode when I'm in edit mode and I'll just hover over a component and then press L. So as you can see here, I'm basically just going around and selecting all of the wooden parts on the gun. So we've got the grip, the rear grip at the stock, and then like the front grip underneath the barrel. And when I've selected all of those, I'm going to press P and then split. And that'll basically just take all of those parts we've selected and make them into their own object. As we can see here, this is the result of splitting the object. So we can hide the main object and we're basically just looking at the parts we split off here. Um, I mean, it's just preference, but you can start renaming these objects as you split them, or you can split all of the objects and then rename them at the end, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to rename it here to start off with. So we're basically just double clicking the object in the scene collection and then changing the name. So these names don't really matter. It's only the suffix that matters. So for example, I'm putting wood parts underscore low. And you need to put the underscore low after every single part you make. A lot of the time when you're splitting the objects, you won't get a clean resource straight away. So as you can see here, I'm just going back into the, the base model. You can see all these small faces that are just sitting in the 3D space. These actually belong to the I just created. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select those faces, press P, uh, split them, make them their own object. And then I'm going to join those two objects by selecting the small faces and the wood part low and pressing Ctrl G. A lot of the time when you're splitting the objects, you won't get a clean resource straight away. So as you can see here, I'm just going back into the, the base model. You can see all these small faces that are just sitting in the 3D space. Is actually belong to the I just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those faces, press P, uh, split them, make them their own object. 
And then I'm going to join those two objects by selecting the small faces and the wood part low and pressing Ctrl G. So while it's important to split a rig out into its own object, you can also have multiple parts of the gun in the same object. So the way you've got to think about when you're doing this is when you're baking, you're going to have a cage around your low poly. So that's going to be like your low poly offset by a certain distance. And you've basically got to figure out how high off the low poly your high poly is going to be. And that's going to be your cage distance. And when you're joining these parts into one object, you want to make sure the cages don't overlap each other. That's generally how you know where you should put the objects and how you should join them together. I'm just going to let the recording play now. You can see how I split out this model. If you don't want to watch the whole process, you can skip to around 24 minutes. And then we're going to begin renaming all of the parts.
at this point we've got all of our parts split out into separate objects so we basically got a, a ton of objects and we're going to want to consolidate these um, you, you can have all these objects as their own individual dot underscore low but um when you get around to creating your high poly it's going to make things really complicated you're going to have a ton of um a ton of folders and a ton of different naming conventions and it's just going to be really confusing for you so all i'm doing here is selecting multiple objects that are not positioned too closely to each other so as i said before we need to keep in mind the the cage of each individual object and make sure they're not overlapping as a general rule of thumb um, you just want to be selecting objects that are not remotely close to each other where i've joined a few of the objects i will double click the name in the collection panel and then just rename it so yeah, as i said before these names are important anything you've got to keep the same and everyone is the uh, underscore low so i've just been calling these parts one low parts two low but you can use like barrel low trigger low mag low whatever is easy for you So as you can see here, we've got our low poly model. We've split it into different objects. We've made sure they're underscore low. And then the next part will be creating our high poly and then we'll go on to baking. There'll be separate tutorials, I think. It's worth noting at this point that you only need to do this once per model. So once you've got this fixed, you can save it and then use it for yeah, all of your Thompson skins. If you found this useful, I'm going to link my Discord in the description. You can ask any questions there.